Hey, hey Mung Beans. Beans. I'm Joey. I'm Ashley. And, and this, this is Wine Time Mysteries. Mysteries. If you're into true crime, and if the paranormal gets your nips hard, then this is for you. But before we get started, make sure to follow us on Spotify and stalk us on Insta and TikTok. Or send your inquiries to winetimemysteries at gmail.com and we promise to at least try to get back to you. Let go! I do like talking about John's though a lot, don't I? And if your episode today, you bitch, is John again, so help me God. Is it John? I feel like I'm going to just drop little Johns everywhere. (laughs) Is that a euphemism? Maybe. Just dropping turds everywhere? Little Johns. Little John? Yeah. Little long John I can't help it that a lot of serial killers or murderers are called John. Cute. Well, that's fair. It's not about a John, but it does have a John in it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not even kidding. Ugh. My one today is about Patricia Margaret Byers, dubbed the Black Widow. Um, I saw a good video for this one, Crimes That Shocked Australia, just under Patricia Byers, get on that shit. It was very good. Um, But also for this, I found a lot of, um, what is it like there, case transcripts. I'm doing hand movements while Joe's just looking at me like, use your fucking words. I'm just smiling. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> I'm Shemir's, just here for a good time. Yeah, Shasmir's caught transcripts, but yeah. that's fine. Yeah, because that's the thing. It's really interesting. Get all those little little nitty gritty bits, you know? I just love how most of them are like open to the public. Yeah, it's super interesting. So I'm going to set the mood a little for you. Oh, should I turn the lights down? Oh. Should I put on some sexy music, Barry so, White? I was just about to say Barry White. The first, <laughs> the last, my everything. <laughs> it's a nice, beautiful Sunday, Arvo, being April 1993. I was, oh. I was three years old. You're welcome. A couple decides to go out to Moreton Bay. Oh. Yeah, which is in Queensland, Australia, if you didn't know. Then now you know. Have you ever um, had... Oh, you, you're not a fan of seafood, are you? No, I don't eat seafood. Yuck. Do you know if mum's ever had uh, Morton Bay bugs? Oh, fuck yeah, she would have. Mm. She has bought some weird fucking crustaceans that you've got to, like, smash. And... So, yeah, if you're not from here, it's very popular to be out on your boat, just fishing, hanging out with your mates. So, anyway, this couple, um, they decided to have a little romantic afternoon. They had been dating for three years now and like to just get out and about as most couples do. Not me. No, thank you. Now, this couple was John Ask. I can't even... You know when you, like, listen to a name for so long? I feel like I've been in this case for so long and now when it's time to talk about it, I can't pronounce the end. (laughs) No, say what you want to say. Do it. Do it. You can't... Pronunciate? Fuck off. Is that what you just said? No, shut up. I can't (laughs) pronunciate. How do you say? Pronounce. I can't pronounce their name. I think I can't pronunciate. I think whatever little bit just, of hope you had left in your eyes has it just now died. Gone. <laughs> your eyes look so The fire so dead. went out. Uh, look, you're just being fancy. You're making it fancy. It's kind of like those really intelligent people that say irregardless instead of regardless. <laughs> I haven't said that. Because you don't know that word. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in me vocabulary. <laughs> But apparently, pronounce the eighties. It's fine. <laughs> fuck off. Get <laughs> fucked. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pronunciate. God, I love you. So anyway, this couple was John Asqu- Asquith, Asquith, John Asquith, and Patricia Byers. Now, I did want to mention that Patricia owned this boat called the Misty Blue. So just remember that because. That'll come up a bit later on as well. Misty blue. Okay, cool. I hope I can pronunciate that properly later. Yeah, make sure you can pronounce the eight. <laughs> Fuck. Some people are just going to turn this off and be like, this white bitch cannot fucking talk. <laughs> oh. My- <laughs> oh, no. My education, real good. So, after going out on the water by the afternoon, the boat 
started to have some engine problems. John offered to take the jet ski because, you know, you've just got a jet ski there as well. Why not? To go get some help. But Trish was all like, oh, it's Easter. Nobody will be around. If I can't fix it, we'll spend a romantic night on the water and sort it out tomorrow. So she was very hands on, it said as well. And I'll show you a picture of her later. She looked like pretty feminine, but she had workshop was able to do manual things like get a girl, you know, learn that, learn that shit. So she said, let's watch the sun go down, have some drinks, food and sex. Cause why not make the most of it? You know, oh, yeah. take night. well, especially before those vinegar runs. Oh, so early hours of the morning after the wonderful alcohol and sex fueled night, John happened to wake feeling a bit dazed and felt something warm trickling down his forehead. Did she piss on his face? I was just about to say he d- did not have piss on his oh. face. <laughs> oh, so we had two. She's kicking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he looks up to see two flaps. No. He just standing sees over, her his over his face. Could you holding her lips open. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. Sorry, if you're into piss play, do what you want to do, but not for us, thank you. Not, not kink for sh- anyone. Not I kink will. shaming. You won't, <laughs> I will. I don't care. You dirty piss pirate. <laughs> this is how we're starting. We're, we're doing good. Oh. <laughs> no, Sorry, I, love I it. should shut up and no, I love do it. your story. <laughs> I just have so many opinions today. Yeah, no, it's great. I love it. So, yeah, something warm trickling down his face. Fa- forehead that was not pissed okay <laughs> he looked to where trish should have been above his head but no she wasn't there. <laughs> she wasn't in bed where the fuck you at trish she's not in bed with him where is she he would call out to her before falling back and hitting his head and becoming unconscious later he comes to staggering upstairs he found trish naked groaning obviously they've had a sex field night so she's nude whatever you do you groaning on the deck and to the side of her on the floor he saw what looked like a sawn off rifle interesting right she whispered we've been attacked by pirates <laughs> i love that slow blink <laughs> you just well did. i did say piss pirates yeah, before <laughs> you did i forgot yeah we've been attacked by piss pirates <laughs> so he made a call on the radio for help Keeping in mind, he's barely conscious himself. When the Coast Guard arrived, John could hear them say, there's no sign of a gun. I mentioned that because, you know, you just wait. John and Trish were taken to hospital where doctors would mention that he'd been shot in the head. Interesting, right? He was shot in the head. He was shot in the head. It was noted that officers would later state they both seemed so casual and kind of laughed off the idea that he was shot. He couldn't remember the attack and was a bit stunned. Now, x-rays were done and metal fragments were found in his skull with a depth of seven centimetres deep. Yeah. So pretty much he was shot. On an angle. Well, point blank as well um, in the head, but lucky to survive because it would be later noted that the bullet appeared to have broken apart before hitting him in the head. So detectives were called to the hospital And they went to speak to John because, you know, someone had been shot in the head and they're talking about pirates, blah, blah, blah. Detectives rocked up, but little old Trish was nowhere to be found. Where you at, Trish? Where you gone? They would go to her house and try and find her when the hospital would later ring and advise she was back with John. So she fucked off for a little bit, came back. Now, it's all starting to sound a bit sus, right? Like pirates in Morton Bay. Okay, sweetie. Good Lord. Okay. Yeah. I like this one because it's a very twisty Tony. You just wait. She was questioned by detectives to which she told them pirates entered the boat and that he was shot in the head. Like, okay, Susan, didn't you just laugh at the idea of him being shot earlier? Hmm. Hmm. While all of this was happening, John was undergoing emergency surgery Some of the fragments that had entered his brain were removed with no significant injury. The remaining fragments ricocheted. Look at me. I did. Did I pronounce the eight that word? Yeah. I was expecting ricocheted. (laughs) Ricocheted. (laughs) Anyway, ricocheted out through the skin of his right forehead, of the right side of his forehead. 
leaving a second wound over a depressed fracture of the skull. I'll show you, wait till I show you a picture. It's weird. Police obviously sus on Trish. This bitch is just, yeah. No gun found, no scratch on her, and Morton Bay isn't brimming with pirates. Maybe bogans here and there, but not pirates. Sorry about it. Maybe more than just here and there. <laughs> yeah, because someone... I like, like Morton Bay, though. Yeah. Obviously, Trish becomes the prime suspect, but what motive could she have? Why does she want to kill little old Johnny boy? Police did some digging and would later go to John being like, hey, we just uh, found some life insurance policies that you've taken out. You know, five to be exact, totaling just over $270,000. Is this your signature? Oh, no. Mm. You ho. That may or may not have been the conversation that went down, but that's how I'm going to play it in my head. <laughs> Now, who do you think was the sole beneficiary, if anything, were to happen to dear old John? Fucking Patty. His mistress? The Piss Pirates? No, it was Trish. Yeah, Patty. Patricia. <laughs> Pet, uh, uh, Petty Patty. Petty Patty. <laughs> Petty Patty. John was advised not to go home to Trish. Obviously, the case is still being investigated, but they're like, oh, you've been shot in the head. And hilarious, your signature was fraudulated. Yeah. Did you like that? I made fraudulated. that. Fraudulated, thank your you. Your signature was fraudulated and some bitch is going to be pocketing 200. Five policies and yeah. only 200,000? Yeah. Well, it's 1993. So mm. I don't know how much that would have been back then. Look, like go hard or go home. Yeah, why not? Do a policy for like Do a meal. Do it properly. Yeah. So he went and stayed at his mother's while the investigation was going on. Now, I'm just going to jump back a little as to how Trish and John became together because it's going to give you a bit more to the story later as well. Are they cousins? Yes. No. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I like how you didn't even look shocked. You're just like, yeah, okay. (laughs) This is happening. It's Australia. Why not? Now, when John met Trish, he had a successful insurance brokerage. So he found and met Trish as she was an ambitious and charming agent he would decide to take under his wing, so to say, and become her mentor. Mm. So they know each other. But at this time, she has a partner. Blah, 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 whatever, you know. Trish ended up calling John, saying her partner, Carl Gotch... Oh, I can never pronounce his name. Got... Got... Jens... Gotgens? Gotgens. I know, it's really hard, and I've heard it so many times. Ooh. Um... <laughs> Carl Gottgens, G-O-T-T-G-E-N-S. When I heard it on the radio, not on the radio, on the TV. On the radio. On the radio, it was like Gottgens or Gotch, I don't fucking know. Had dumped her for another woman and moved to Thailand. Hmm. My spidey sense says that's mm. not what happened. Mm. Yeah, just see waves. Just having a bit of a meltdown, because she's on the phone to him. Her partner's just left her for another woman. Asked if she could stay with John. John, being the good guy, was her shoulder to cry on. Now, she must have got it all out of her system in the one night because the next day Trish went to work. I mean, if that was me, you've seen me be a mess. I would not be going I've to never work. seen you be a mess. No, not at all. Pretty sure the whole world has seen me cry. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, yeah, John did mention, like, oh, look at her. She's a strong woman. She's, you know, picking herself back up, going to work. John did pop by her house around a week later and found that she seemed to be doing well and was actually doing some renovations and had workers pouring concrete to make a patio in her backyard. Hmm. You know, why not? Time would go on and, of course, John and Trish became lovers and moved in together. Insert more cute shit here. Now, fast forward back to the investigation. So, obviously, they have these life insurance policies that were clearly forged. Now, for a weapon. They did have divers search where the boat was, just in case there was something thrown overboard. But nothing, of course. So, anyway, do you remember how I said John saw a sawn-off shotgun? Yes. Of what he thought he saw? Well, a kid was fishing on a river and found, like, the butt of a gun. I don't know what the fuck you call that. I'm doing like a stroking. I wish you could see motion. what was uh, big dick motion. <laughs> that is some BDE baby. <laughs> the bottom bit of a gun, 
Now, this creek was actually not far from Trisha's house. I am so shocked. No. Escandalo. Thank you. <laughs> Obviously, divers went in then in that part of the area to see if they can find the barrel of a rifle. They found it in the river. And there's this picture of this guy and he's going like this. And he's like holding it up. And I was just like, Chaka, oh, mate. Oh, Marlon, fuck yeah, just got it, mate. I was like, oh my God. This is an attempted murder. Like, just calm your farm, okay? <laughs> so yeah, I'll post the photo of that. So they found the gun and then police would later search her home, found wood shavings in her shed. So like I said before, she was very hands-on. So she's sawn off, you know, mm-hmm. the rifle herself. That would all then link up. You've got this bitch, right? Fucking done. You betcha. The bitch was surprised as fuck that John survived. He should have been dead. She got this nice little surprise thinking, I've just shot him. I'm going to go out onto the boat. And then she hears him calling out to her, you know, as I did at the start of the story. Oh, so she then laid down and pretended to mm. be writhing mm. in pain or nudy, nude, mm. nude. Because that would have been a bit of a shock as a murderer to go, oh, okay, I've just shot him while he's sleeping, point blank, gone out onto the boat because she's, you know, probably figuring out what she's going to do later on. Was the whole breaking down meant to happen? To hear his name and then she's gone, oh, fuck. Lay back down. Oh, pirates, pirates. But did he even look over? I mean, he would have, he was half out of it anyway. Yeah, so he like wouldn't have been, known to look. He's been shot in the head. Yeah. Like he didn't know anything. Never mind then. Yeah. So I won't go into full detail on this part of the case. There is a lot that you can find out about her and John. Um, and there was even mentioned that for some fucking reason, he went back to her for a little bit because he didn't believe she tried to kill him. But then she tried to poison him with food. And then he was like, okay, maybe she is trying to kill me. So while this investigation is going on still, for she's still trying murder, to, kill- <laughs> she tried to fucking kill him again. Look, she's not very smart. <laughs> yeah. She tried to poison him. <laughs> I'm not, it's not funny. No, it's, it's just- not like. You are it's literally not funny at his expense. It's funny that she's that dumb. Yeah, like you're under investigation <laughs> and you try to poison him after mm. he comes back for a little bit. So at the Queensland Supreme Court, she denied everything. She tried to accuse John of shooting himself and trying to defraud the insurance companies. Like, okay, honey. Oh, and she also represented herself. Odd, right? I wish they learnt yeah. that you should never represent yourself oh. because you will always lose. She does this more than once, so oh god, mm, it's her thing. Fortunately, the jury didn't swallow her story, and she was sentenced to twelve years for attempted murder. But this is where I want to digress a bit and talk about her ex-partner. You know, Carl. Uh. Just talk a bit about him. So Carl Gotkins disappeared in 1990 but only in 1993 was he reported missing when his kids read a story in the paper about buyers and how she had tried to kill john Mm. and obviously they haven't heard from him Mm -hmm. in years Mm -hmm. so carl's kids contacted police saying they had actually not heard from their father since he left trish A few years, you might say, how could you not know where your father is, like where he's missing? Well, he was an engineer and would always work away. Like I I could see things he'd work in Thailand and, you know, just always traveling away all the time. Working overseas, month on end, that kind of thing. Now, the thing that was also very odd was that all of his assets were now in Trisha's possession. Of course. I mean, they were together for like eight years but a bit weird if you're running off with another woman. Hey, just to like leave all your stuff. Mm. You know how I said he was leaving her to go to Thailand, marry a lady? She had his boat, the Misty Blue, and she tried the one that she tried to kill yeah. John on. She had his house, everything. Carl's children told police that when they hadn't heard from their father, they contacted Patricia, who told them he had left her for his new Thai girlfriend. They didn't think this was sus at first because she seemed extremely upset about it all. Now, Carl was actually 
leaving Trish to go to Thailand. Like he was ready to break up the relationship. He had bought a plane ticket to Thailand, but unfortunately he'd failed to board his flight and was last seen when his boss dropped him off at his home a few days before no one heard from him. Mm -hmm. A few weeks after he was meant to leave, Carl's boss received a typed letter from Carl saying he would like to quit. He's happy where he is and also mentioned that he'd settled the house with Trish and get this, this is all in the letter. I was just like, fuck me. He thinks that, well, he thought that he'd made a mistake leaving her and said that she was smart and good looking and just, you know, she wouldn't be left on the shelf because she's such an attractive woman and he felt bad leaving her. Police would obviously start to look into all of this, like it's super sus. They found that Trish had actually cancelled his tickets, getting a refund as well, and she'd put it down as if she was married. And so his initials were like C.T. Gotkins, however Mm. you pronounce it. So she was trying to make out that the T, oh, that's just my signature, T. Gotkins. No, where am I going with this? Mm Mm-hmm. Now, also what was super weird was his accounts were being used in Australia. Even though he's in Thailand. Yeah. As well as his signature on some home renovation things. Bit interesting, right? I mean, it's so weird. Like someone forging something, maybe? Was that your stomach? That was the chair. (laughs) Do you see my face? It's like your throat. You know how I do that weird thing? So diving deeper into this, they found that Carl had transferred the house to Patricia around Mm. three weeks after he was supposedly leaving for Thailand. Likely story. This bitch even had his will adjusted so that the kids were cut out of it because he had, I'm pretty sure it was two kids to a previous marriage and she had two kids as well, but they're older. So the kids are adults Mm -hmm. already out of the house kind of thing. Uh, They obviously now have been able to get a search warrant go through her house to see what's happened to Carl now that she's attempted to kill her previous partner. Oh, and apparently her first husband died as well, which we'll get into a little bit later. So in the house, a diary was found with an entry on Friday the 6th of July, which I'll also put a picture of this up because I'm going to show you later as well. So the entry on Friday the 6th of July, 1990, saying Carl left, dropped him in the city. And also just above that, that she was receiving a bed because apparently Carl took his bed to Thailand because, you know, that's what you do. He took it on the plane. Yeah, yeah. Give your house to the woman you're leaving and take your bed. Like, that sounds legit, right? She killed him on the bed. Mm. Obviously, police searched the bedroom and even though a few years had passed since Carl was last seen, they actually did find some blood on the walls. Uh-huh. Little tiny specks. And on the wooden floor under the carpet, they also found some blood. Now, funny thing is, in November 1990, four months after Carl went missing, a carpet firm company was phoned up by a woman identifying herself as Mrs. Gotchens. Can't even pronounce his name. Gotchens. <laughs> Asking for a quote on carpet for our house, which was at Yatla. Even though there was technically no weapon, no crime scene, they knew this bitch had forged his signatures to own all of his things. Like, and if you're still alive, you would be fighting that shit. Mm -hmm. Like, you wouldn't just be letting someone use your accounts, racking up a debt, doing all of this stuff. So she did plead guilty to his murder in 1999, once again representing herself. Now, Trish did get charged for the murder of Carl, even though to this day, no body has been found. But due to, it was more, even though there was no body, it was just due to all her, like, you know, taking the assets, all of his stuff. It just doesn't add up to anything. Her behavior. Yeah. Yeah. And especially what she's just done to her previous partner. So she was charged to life in prison. Now, I'm towards the end of this case, and hopefully we'll have a bit more updates later on that we'll get into, but I just want to give you a little bit of a timeline on this bitch as well. 
after she's gone to jail. So in 2000, she tried to reappeal against her conviction. Her convention. She tried to reappeal against her conviction. Once again, representing herself. She was denied. <laughs> yeah. In 2006, Carl's family fought to receive all of his assets back. Once again, Trish represented herself. Thank goodness the family won and she also had to pay them back like $54,000 or something along those lines. Well, I'm, I'm sure that family wasn't stupid and they would yeah. have had an actual legal, uh, a legal aid or a lawyer. Yeah. And I know he's been missing for a while, but also apparently it sounded like they were close, but not really close. Like he would call the kids for their birthdays. But other than that, it was, they were used to not hearing from yeah, him do your in own a thing. while. Yeah. In 2009, Byers was moved from Brisbane Women's Correctional Centre to a South Australian prison to be closer to her son, Alan. She has since had her parole denied due to South Australia's no body, no parole laws. Mm. So in 2016, Byers admitted to police that she hit Carl with a blunt object and that he fell into the Coomera River. Huh, which is why there's no body. Mm. Still with this info, no body has been found, but like it also doesn't add up given mm-hmm. the blood that was found in the bedroom. In the bedroom, yeah. Yeah, so they, the police think she's, she's full lying. of shit. Yeah. She's full of shit. So obviously it's 2021 now. I haven't seen any updates of her going for parole. Like I told you earlier, I was looking at, you know, like South Australian kind of look up that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, best believe, I think we'll hear a bit more about her and I might give you a little, little update. Do it. Yeah. Here and there. Um, but yeah, to this day, John is adamant that he is under the deck. The fact that she had the concrete poured Uh the week Uh after, you know, you know, but yeah, that was the story of Trish Byers, the black widow. I just wonder. I like this. Actually. Yeah, right. I I wonder though, what would she have to lose? Like, why? What? So many questions, hey. Well, maybe it's just how to structure the questions. I don't know. <laughs> um, so nobody, no parole. I kind of like that because then it means that yeah, it gives closure to to the loved ones, right? Mm-hmm. But if she was willing to say, well, yeah, I mean, technically, I did kill him. He's just mm. in the river. Why wouldn't she just say he's under the concrete? Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand. John has put out a couple of other interviews. Like I've seen some stuff from like 2018, 2020 being like, oh, she might be coming out soon. But there hasn't been any, like she hasn't gone for parole or anything like that. So I feel like there's a little bit more that might come out later on down the track. Yeah. Um, her first husband did die and they went to look into it as well just to kind of see seeing as though she's kind of killed off one partner oh fuck off (laughs) get fucked fuck off so yeah they had a look into that but apparently there was no foul play so they didn't say how he died but apparently she had nothing to do with that but i mean sounds us right it does and then look i just have so many questions yeah i do we ever did we find out why she did what she did for carl John, like why she tried to kill him. Uh, Mon- we money. know it's money. Yeah. Um, but did she disclose? No. From what you saw? Mm-mm. Did so, she just deny, deny, deny? Yeah. So she said that he tried to shoot himself. Yeah. She claimed do, it was just him. Yeah. So she is not telling the truth from the get go. And to me, representing yourself means not having to disclose what you did to a lawyer yeah yeah and then it can't be used against you yeah and it was noted that she was pretty smart like i mean she would have gotten away with carl if she would have killed john in the first place most likely if it wasn't a botched murder it just takes one his family wouldn't have come out you know what i mean Mm. but yeah i didn't go into full detail like there's a lot but I kind of feel if you want to hear a bit more about it, go watch the docos and stuff like that. Cause there is a lot of extra info, um, just all about, you know, her doing renovations and stealing and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You're welcome. 
So, yeah, I'll update you mung beans later if uh, Trishy tries to get out of jail. Love you, bye. Goodbye.